Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Welcome to game number 24. Here are the 2023 Tenora Rams boys baseball season. Coming up live here from Groove Field at Tenora High School. Church Tenora Rams taking on the Archibald Blue Streaks in a non-conference showdown. Tenora comes in representing the GMC, the Green Medals Conference. While Archibald, they come in representing the NWOAL, the Northwest Ohio Athletic League. Actually, it's a game that was supposed to take place back on... May the 2nd over at Archibald and rain washed that one out so indirectly it's a wasn't actually on the schedule for a makeup game but as tournament drew closer coaches got together and it's a basically a pre-tournament tune-up for both both these teams who actually could meet down the road in the division three districts similar to last year at defiance Rams come in at 19 and 4 overall they finished five and two in the gym C and Rams coming in playing their best ball of the time of the year you wanted to play it. Rams have won eight straight and eleven of their last twelve games. Blue Streaks of Archibald, they come in at fifteen and eight, six and one in the NWOAL, finished the top the conference standings with Patrick Henry tied at a six one mark. Last night Archibald lost to the Ottawa Glandor. Titans by a score of four to one or four to three. While here at Sonora on Senior Day, Rams defeated Delta by a score of eleven to one. Since two thousand, Rams and Archibald. Archibald has a slight advantage, twelve to nine. Last season in a game of dominant pitching, Sonora's Nolan Schaefer supplied the only run of the game in the bottom of the fourth inning with a solo home run over the left center fence, giving the Rams a 1-0 win over Archibald in the districts at Defiance High School. That was a heck of a game as DJ Newman and Kaysen Wolfram on the mound for the Rams. Welcome to the side desk of any pregame. Signs Excavating can assist with your general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist you. Today's first pitch set for 5 o'clock or around there, give or take a couple minutes. Never seems to actually start at 5 o'clock. Signs Excavating team is committed to doing the job right on schedule and within budget. Based here in rural defiance, Signs Excavating serves all of Northwest Ohio, providing reliable and affordable excavating services for your home, business, or industrial properties. The Signs Excavating team offers many excavating services, including stone hauling, trenching, demolition, land clearing, and drainage work. Signs Excavating is the official pregame sponsor of the Snow Rams Live Spring Sports Season. For all your excavating needs, you can get a hold of Josh, 419-769-2290. For your trucking needs, you can call Brad, 419-481-3738. Of course, you can visit them on Facebook or go to signsexcavating.com. Looking at the NWOAL standings, as we said, Patrick Henry and Archibald each tied 6-1 atop the standings. Liberty Center was 5-2. and two. Evergreen was... Evergreen, Swanton, and Bryan were each 3-4. and four. Wasion was 2-5, and five, and Delta was 0-7. Oh Wayne Trace finished atop the GMC standings with a 7-0 and mark, where Tenora finished second at 5-2. and two. Rams have the number one seed in the upcoming tournament, while Archibald is the number two seed. Archibald will play the winner... And host of the game, the winner of uh, Pauling and Swanton, that takes place tomorrow. While Tenora will host the winner of the Delta-Ottawa Hills game here Friday. And that game also takes place tomorrow, the Ottawa Hills and Delta contest. Entering today, Rams team ERA is 1.78 on the mound. While at the plate, the Rams bring in a 306 team average. Rams average seven runs a game while giving up just a shade over three runs a contest. Rams have a senior class of six, which we celebrated senior night last night. Luke Harris, Corbin Castile, Ty Wimp, Kenny Light, Plasman, Dalton Wolfram, and Taryn Ward. Dalton Wolfram leads the Ram attack, coming in with a 425 average, 25 runs batted in, and 20 stolen bases. Caden Radzik, right behind him, 265, or 365 for Caden, 23 RBIs and 19 steals. Corbin Steele has come the ace of the staff over the last three weeks. Corbin 5-2 and two, ERA of 1.54. He has two straight shutouts versus 
Patrick Henry and Bryan. So we said the Rams have won eight straight and eleven to twelve. The last time the Rams were defeated was that thriller on Saturday at Clyda, where the Rams lost three to two. That was back on April 29th. Last season, the streaks finished at sixteen and eight. They were five and two in the NWOL. That was good enough for second place. They lost DJ Newman, who was the conference player of the year, and he was first team All Ohio. He was also the Crescent News Player of the Year. Zane Bainfelt and JB Burkle also graduated. Those two were Honorable mention all NWOAL last season. This season the streaks are fifteen and eight, as we said, six and one co champs for the NWOAL title. Archibald has won seven of their last nine. They are coached by head coach Dick Salgo, fourteen years for coach, two ninety and one thirty three for Coach Salgo, assisted by Jeff Brunswick, Scott Four, JV coach is Kirk Windley, Volunteer JV coach, Derek Grime, Lauren Brown, and Toby Walker. Superintendent at Archibald is Dr. Jason Selgo. Principal is Royal Short. Athletic Director, Ellen Gladio. Athletic Trainer, Tina Stanley. They are from the NWOAL. They are Division Three, 152 boys, 156 girls. Colors are navy, blue, and yellow. Rams are coached by Head Coach Brent Renolette. 23 seasons here at Tenora. To overall Tenora career, 404 and 178. His overall coaching career is 454 and 203. Assisted by Chuck Carey, Reed Anders, and Eric Tipton. Four final four appearances, one state title, that was in 2014. Ten overall GMC titles for Coach Renolette. Superintendent at Northeastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. Principal is Alex Nafziger. Athletic Director is Mr. Craig Rudder. Trainer is Emily Volmar. Rams colors are Hunter Green and White. Rams Division 3 as well, 147 boys, 127 girls. So wherever you are, however you may be listening or watching, thanks for tuning in to tonight. Coming up here from Tenor High School, it's the Tenor Rams taking on the Archibald Blue Streaks in a non-league matchup here in boys baseball. Right. Studio tonight brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon. That's at 413 Hopkins Street here in Defiance. We're going to have the brief pause for playing of our national anthem. of the National Anthem here at Sonora High School. In-game scoreboard brought to you by Drop Zone Pizzeria and Striker in Ayersville. Pre-game signs excavating. Video sponsored brought to you by Batten Stevens Body Shop. That's in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Stats brought to you by BSN Sports and Mr. Jim Gares. Post-game, Midlack Insurance and Investments. Player of the game, Higby Embroidery. Uniforms tonight. Rams with the black tops on with the hunter green numbers and white trim where the visiting streaks have the yellow tops with the navy blue numbers and lettering with the white trim. David Frank weather forecast, mostly sunny, 75 degrees here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Quickly, we we'll have to run down the starting lineups again. Like I said, sometimes we start at 5, sometimes we start at 4.53. <laughs> Stephen Diller will be leading off for the streaks. He will be at shortstop, batting second. 
Devin Morris will be in right field. Betting third, Creighton Kern in center field. Cleanup spot is Brian Burrows. He will be at third base. Betting fifth at first base, Mason Siegel. Betting sixth in left field is Carson Dominic. And batting seventh at second base, Jaden Seiler. Batting eighth at the DH spot is Micah Nossiger. And batting ninth behind the plate is Jet Bond. For the Rams defensively, Eli Plasman is on the mound. Connor or, or Dalton Wolfram is behind the plate. Got so much of Connor last night, I put him in the game already. Bosselman's at first, Harris is at second, Radzik is short, Ward is at third. Rams outfield left to right, Mosier, Gus Weiler, and Connor Wolfram is in right. Connor, heck of a game last night, picked up his first varsity win. Up to the plate, number six, Stephen Diller. Eli, 4 and 1 overall, ERA at 2.16, 45 in the third innings, 25 runs, 14 earned runs, 43 hits, 13 walks, and 23 strikes. Stepping in for the Blue Streaks, Stephen Diller. First pitch outside. Ball one. We are underway here at Sonora. 454 is the first pitch. Plasman's 1 0 to Diller. Swung on. Fouled off first base side. Bosselman gives chase. Runs out of real estate. Diller, 280. Three home runs, six RBIs. You're right. For Coach Sago and the Streaks. So has three stolen bases. Pitch. Strike two called to the leadoff hitter. First stop, Stephen Diller. Archibald co-champs in the NWOAL. Hyde Patrick Henry at top. The 6 1 league mark. Plasman's 1 2. A bit low. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Last time we saw Eli was May 11th versus Bluffton. Rams with an 8-1 win. Plasman went the distance. Allowed one run. Gave up six hits, three strikeouts, and did not walk anybody. Senior Plasman pitches from the center of the rubber. Winds it up. His 2-2 pitch to Diller. Diller laces it foul down the left side. Long strike for Diller. And as we said, these two teams could actually have a rematch in the sectional finals. Or the district finals, my apologies. In the district finals, the Rams are the number one two seed while the streaks come in at the number two seed. Archibald will play the winner of Paulding Swatton Friday, while Tenora plays the winner of Delta and Ottawa Hills. Pitch is drilled to the left center gap. Gus Weiler gives chase. Can't get it. One hops the wall. Diller in with a stand-up double to start the game for the streaks. Diller absolutely unloaded on that plasma pitch. Sent it deep to left center field. Devin Morris. <coughs> Going to bring up Devin Morris. Morris has six home runs, 13 runs batted in on the season. Comes in with a 298 average. Runner at second, Diller. <coughs> Plasman works out of the set position. Pitch up and away. Ball one. <coughs> What's he doing? <coughs> He's working for 1-0 pitch coming from Plasman to Morris. <coughs> I got it. Fouled off back behind us. Count evens had a ball and a strike. The last time we saw Archibald in Archibald was 2011. Morris deposits one and that was right field trees over there. Rams with the actual come from behind win in that game. Pitch to Morris. Strike. Two called. One ball and two strikes to the streaks. Right fielder, Devin Morris. Creighton Kern awaits on deck for Archibald. <coughs> Plasman, long look in. Finally gets the sign he wants from Dalton Wolfram. Come set. One, two pitch. That's drilled. This time in the right center gap. That is off the wall. Coming around, trying to score. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Dillers. Four standing up, back-to-back -back Rockets. One to left center, and this one by Morris to right center. Both about in the same spot. One hop the wall. 
Streaks on top, one nothing. Up to the plate, number four. Now Creighton Curtin is going to step in. Creighton comes in with a 508 average, has 13 runs batted in and 14 stolen bases. Streaks as a team hit 305. Pitch to Are you joking? Creighton Kern. No. Keep coughing. Keep I can coughing. talk. I'm not sure. I know first aid. I can As a oh, ball outside, ball one. That's scary. Morris leads from second. Plasman comes set. His 1-0 pitch inside. Leans Kern back. Two balls and no strikes to Creighton Kern. Now, one thing we learned today was the Rams starter on Friday will more likely be Corbin Castile with Eli yeah. taking the ball tonight. Plasman's 2-0. Strike called. Two balls and one strike. So Coach Renolette obviously has to be careful. I mean, seeing how the rest of the game goes, can't use too many arms tonight, knowing you have a tournament game on Friday. Plasman's 2-1 to Kern. Morris leads from second. Here comes the pitch. Hits shortstop side. That's another base hit. Mosier up with the ball. Here comes Morris trying to score, and he does. Streaks on top, 2 nothing on three straight hits. I know where that is. <laughs> Kern with the smash. Radzik had no chance. So Archibald with a nearly 2 nothing lead on two doubles and a single. Ryan Burroughs steps in. Those top three hitters are probably three of the top hitters that you're going to see this season. So Plasman can right the ship and get through the inning with just a 2 nothing deficit. Done his job. The pitch. There goes the runner. Fouled off first base side. Out of play. Strike one to Brian Burroughs. 268 for Burroughs with nine RBIs. Are they close to you? Yeah, they're living in the back. Yeah, right. Yeah. I live up front. I live up front. Yeah. Rams have, it seems like we've been at home forever, which in theory we've had. We've played 13 of our last 15 games at home. Plasma steps off, fires over to first base. Always indirectly, always say Defiance never actually plays a road game. <laughs> it seems like the Rams haven't played outside of a trip to Wasion and Clyda. Throw back over to first base. Back safely is Kern. But those are the only two road games the Rams have played, I think, in about the last month. Yeah. Oh, one pitch coming to Burroughs from Plasman. There goes the runner. Well, from throw into center field, it goes. Turn with a stolen base. No balls and two strikes to count to Burroughs. Is that That's assumed, what I told her. Is that assumed at this point in your marriage, or is it? Uh, no, you had sort of do that. No two pitch coming. To the number four hitter, Brian Burroughs. Plasman comes set. Here comes the pitch. Outside. Nice stop by Wolfram. Say the, the wild pitch. Brooke. Thank you, Ray, for tuning in. And Bridget, she's watching from the junior high baseball tourney in Edgerton. He's got a game tonight. One, two pitch coming to Burroughs, high and away. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. Rams trying to shake the rust off. I guess not shake the rust off, but shake the cobwebs or something out here in the top of the first inning. Three straight hits. They trail already 2-0 to the streaks. Plasman's 2-2 coming to Burroughs. Long set by Eli. Burroughs asks for time. He steps out. Mason Siegel awaits on deck. Two two pitch coming. Hi, ball three. Went from 0-2 to 3-2. This is a kind of team you're going to see on Friday. More likely Otto Hills. Although, after this pitch, 3-2 pitch coming from Burroughs. That's low ball four. So Burroughs has worked the walk, being down 0-2 to drawing a walk. But last night, Delta actually played much better than I thought through the first six, five innings, really. I think it was 5-1 to one going into the bottom of the sixth. And then Coach Lefevre kind of put a bunch of pitchers in who haven't really pitched much this season. Mason Siegel steps in, 367 with 12 runs batted in for Siegel. He bats from the right side. Plasman's pitch, swung on, hit to right field. Over the head of Connor Wolfram. He came in. 
It went flying over his head. That should be, it's gonna score. Well, let's see where they put the runners. Should score one on the play. Kern scores. Burroughs should stop at third. Siegel will have a double. Plasman and the Rams have yet to get an out. They trail three nothing. Two doubles and two, a single and a walk here in the first. The number six hitter, Carson Dominic, steps in. Coach Tipton gonna make the trip to talk to senior starter Eli Plasman. Definitely not the start the Rams have wanted here. One game before the term of starts. Now that we have a second. All-conference GMC baseball team was released. Player of the year was Cooper Winslick sure? from Wayne Trace. Rams had two on the first team, Alex Shoblin and Dalton Wolfram. Caden Radzik made the second team. Corbin Castillo was honorable mention. Oh, they're not well. Are your hot dogs well and done? We'll run through some of the other ones here when we get a little extended period. <laughs> three nothing streaks they have. Three runs on four hits. They have runners at second and third. Burroughs is at third. Siegel's at second. Dominic's at the plate. 265 for Carson. One home run, seven RBIs. Oh, no, go to that window. Pitches high and away. Ball won this game. Actually, we said it's supposed to take place in Archibald on May 2nd, and our friends over there at Railway Radio. This is my replacement. Ryan Throne and Coach Krause were supposed to do the game. Pitches rocketed by Coach Selko down there a third. Shows he still has a little hop in the step. For sure. What's your business? Coach Salgo, 14 years at Archibald, 290 wins. Pitch. Pit. And Radzik is short. Radzik throws over to first base. That's going to score a run. Burrow scores from third. Dominic gets an RBI on the fielder's choice. 6 3 on the putout. That's the first out of the inning. Holding at second base was Siegel as the play was right in front of him. Jaden Seiler going to step in. Seiler, 229 with 10 RBIs for the streak. Seiler, quite the basketball season as well for Archibald. We saw plenty of Archibald during the basketball season. Play the home, uh, home game, or Archibald played a home game versus Tenor. Then we saw them in the sectional finals. Pitches ball one outside to Seiler. Mike Nofziger on deck. Plasman's pitch is just a bit up and in. Two balls and no strikes to Jaden Seiler. Seiler, three or four and one on the mound for the streaks this season. 2 0 pitch. Swung on, hit to deep right field. Connor Wolfram. Cruises back, puts it away for the second out. Tagging up and heading from second to third is Mason Siegel. Seiler gave it a ride to deep right field. So Connor Wolfram camped underneath and put her away. The eighth man to bat in the inning, Micah Nofziger. Nofziger is the DH. He's hitting for the starting pitcher, Mason Towns. No, no. Okay, you will be. I will be. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Krause. Appreciate it. You guys do a fantastic job over there. You and Ryan. Pitches outside. Ball one to Micah. Didn't actually have any stats for Micah. I'm not sure if this is his first at bat this season. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Plasman. One one count to Nasiger. Jet Bond on deck for the streaks. Plasman winds it up. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Nasseger. That's low. Nice stop by Wolfram. Saved a run. Streaks have four runs on four hits here in the first inning. Have a runner at third with two outs. Nasseger at the dish. Plasman winds it up. His 2-1 pitch. Outside ball three. Three-one pitch, swung on and missed. 
Hey, 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 Three, two, pitch coming. Swung on. High pop in the shallow right field. Harris goes out. Camps underneath it. Puts it away for out number three. F4 on the put out. But in the first inning, Archibald does some damage for the streaks. They get four runs on four hits. No Ram errors and one left on base after a half inning of play here at Groove Field at Tenor High School. It's the Archibald Blue Streaks four and the Tenor Rams, they're coming to bat on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940 Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Back here at Groove Field at Sonora High School, Rams have a lot of catching up to do. They trail 4 nothing after just a half inning of play. For the Rams, first three batters, Aiden Mosier, Caden Radzik, and Kaysen, or Dalton Wolfram. I've got all the Wolframs playing today. Dalton Wolfram face Mason Town or Mason, uh, Mason Towns. Towns 4-0 with an ERA of 2.50, 28 innings pitched, 22 hits, 10 earned runs, 24 walks, 29 strikeouts. For Mason Towns, Jet Bond behind the plate. Mason Siegel at first. Jaden Seiler at second. Steven Diller at short. Brian Burroughs is at third. Outfield is Carson Dominic in left. Creighton Kern in center. And Devin Morris is in right field. Mike Nossiger is your DH hitting for Towns. Come on, buddy. A big hole out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Aiden Moser is going to step in. 273 for Aiden. He has 17 walks on the season and 16 stolen bases. Well, we appreciate everybody for tuning in from Archibald and Sonora. Coach Krause, always good to see Coach. Look where you want to hit. When we run into him. There you go. Downs the lefty. First pitch. He nails Mosier right in the back. So Mosier is going to trot down to first base after being hit by the pitch. Yeah. For Towns, that's the just the third batter he's hit on the season. Sometimes, if you're a left-handed pitcher and you face a left-handed batter, there's something about that. It just kind of throws you off a bit. I don't know what it is. Just something psychologically that just doesn't click. Lefty on lefty. At least personally, I found that. Mosier with the lead. Always a threat to go. Pitches a ball. Throw down to first base. Gets away. Mosier gets up. Nice backup over there by Devin Morris. Radzik on the season, 365. 23 runs batted in and 19 stolen bases. Rams here the last two or three weeks have just been fleet-footed on the base pass. They've doubled their stolen bases. Pitch to Radzik is high and away. Ball two, two balls and one strike. Both these teams will be in action on Friday. Rams and Archibald both have home games in the sectional semifinals. Opponent yet to be determined. Pitch to Radzik. Strike on the outside corner. Two balls and one strike to Caden. We said these two teams met last year in the district's semifinals, and that was a heck of a game from Defiance High School. Throw over back with the head first dive is Mosier. We said Mosier 16 stolen bases, but last year DJ Newman and Kaysen Wolfram matched up on the mound. Only run was a Nolan Schaefer solo home run, top of the fourth inning. Pitch outside, ball three, three balls and a strike to Caden Radzik on deck is Dalton Wolfram. But if you're a fan of runs, last year's game it was it was thrilling, no doubt about it. Every inning, inning after inning was just like a nail biter. 
pitch to Radzik is high. Ball four. So Radzik will make his way down the first base on the walk. And Mosier, who was hit by a pitch, takes off for second. Dalton Wolfram steps in. Wolfram, after a little bit of a slump, has righted his ship back over the 400 mark. Had been very hot this week. Dalton, 425, 25 runs batted in and 20 stolen bases. Mason Towns comes set. Pitch to Wolfram is up and in. Ball one. Towns, 28 innings pitched and 24 base on balls. This pitch is high. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Dalton Wolfram. Four nothing streaks here in the bottom of the first inning. Archibald just came out like a house of fire. Towns come set. 2-0 pitch to Dalton Wolfram inside. Dalton didn't think so, nor did too many other home plate umpires that set behind the fence. <laughs> two balls and a strike to Dalton. Rams have 2-1 with nobody out. They trail 4-0 here in the bottom of the first. Towns 2-1 pitch outside. Ball three. I think the ball three pitch was better than the strike one <laughs> pitch there. Beggars cannot be choosy. First time in bed. Third. 3-1 pitch coming to Dalton. He hits it shortstop side. Diller up with it over to second. Oh, the throw looked high and away. I don't know that Siler kept his foot on the bag, but he was ruled out at second. So the fielder's choice out is at second on a ground ball to Dillard. His throw was high and away. Siler tried to keep his toe on the bag. The ump said he did. So Wolfram was on the first on the fielder's choice. Down to third goes Aiden Mosier. Rams have runners at the corner with one out here. Wolfram always a threat to go. Pitch to Ward is up and in. Taron 349 with 15 runs batted in on the season. Uh, yeah, 1-0 pitch from Towns coming to the senior third baseman. Ward hits it just outside the bag at first down the right side. Foul. One ball, one strike to Taron Ward. One out. Bottom of the first. Rams trail 4-0. They have runners at the corners, however, with Taron Ward at the plate. The lefty Mason Towns comes set. It's going to pitch from the set position. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Ward. There goes the runner. Wolfram, he's caught in a rundown. Throw home. Not in time. Wolfram goes back to second. And Mosier comes across the plate. Archibald threw through. Wolfram stopped, which allowed Mosier to jet for the plate. The throw came home. And as the throw came home, Wolfram just continued his way down to second base. So stolen base for Dalton. Rams are on the board with their first run. They trail 4-1. to one. For Dalton, 21 steals now on the season. Towns one ball, two strike pitch to Taron Ward. Swung on and miss. Down goes Ward. It's the second out here in the first inning. Luke Harris going to step in. Harris at second base today. 290 with 13, uh, 13 runs batted in. First pitch to Luke. Strike called Luke. All GMC first team in basketball. Averaged 18 points a contest this past season. We said we saw the streaks in that sectional, uh, sectional finals at Springfield this year. 0-1 pitch. It's just a bit outside. Count evens at a ball and a strike. 4-1 streaks on top here in the bottom of inning number one. From an overcast, partly sunny Tenora High School. 75 degrees on your David Frank weather forecast. 1-1 one, one pitch to Harris. Outside, ball two. Yes. Again, this for whatever is in the, the air here the last two weeks here at Tenora. This has been the calmest I've ever seen it. You always have a wind at least 10, 15 miles an hour. This pitch is low. Ball three here again. Like last night, we barely had a breeze. And tonight's just enough to make the flag move. 
Out in center field is blowing ever so slightly from left to right. 3-1 pitch from Towns to Harris. Wolfram leads from second. There he goes. Throw down to third. Not in time. Wolfram, we've seen on the season, not afraid to take off for third. So 22 stolen bases now for Dalton. I think three or four times in the last two weeks we've seen the throw go into left field. That pitch with a strike to Harris. Payoff pitch to Luke. Inside. Ball gets behind the catcher. Here comes Wolfram. Darts for home. Head first dive. Wolfram scores on the pass ball. Rams trail 4-2. to two. Harris goes down to first on the base on balls. Going to bring up Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman, the Rams' first baseman, steps to the plate with a 281 average with 13 runs batted in. First pitch hammered to the shortstop. Long throw across by Diller in time to get Bosselman out at first. Nice play by the shortstop, Stephen Diller. 6-3 on the putout for out number three in the inning. The Rams get back into it. They get two runs. Tenora does so with just actually didn't even get a hit they did not even get a hit no errors and one left on base so after an inning of play here at Tenora High School Archibald 4 and Tenora 2 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call 419-784-9880 or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say go Rams. Back at Group Field after one is four to two. I don't think anybody thought the first inning score would be that when they came into play tonight, but thanks uh, Kelly Smith Matterson for tuning in. Coach Kraus, Bridget, Ray, Pittsburgh Zoo, if not already watching, will be soon. And everybody from surrounding area, Tenor Archibald fans, we appreciate you for tuning in here to Tenor Rams Live on this Tuesday pre-tournament tune-up game here at Groove Field. For the streaks, they sent eight batters to the plate in the first inning, scoring four runs on four hits. They'll send up 9-1-2 and two to face Eli Plasman. Jut Bond steps in. First pitch is a strike. 083 for Bond. One run batted in on the season. Plasman's 0-1 coming to Bond. Strike. Two call. Probably our favorite umpire here today. Never... Have to worry about if it's a strike. <laughs> o2 pitch, swung on and fouled back. Count stays at no balls and two strikes. <laughs> John, John agrees. <laughs> Plasman's O2 pitch to Bond. Breaking ball hit into left field. Falls in front of Mosier. Mosier heads over for towards the line, fields it, holds Bond to a long single. So Bond starts the second inning for the streaks with a single. Top of the lineup, Stephen Diller going to step in. Diller launched a leadoff double in the gap to left center. One hop the wall. Came around to score on Devin Morris's double. To the opposite side. Morris was his in the right center gap. First pitch swinging. Foul ball first base side. Wolfram over by the fence. Leaps. Can't make the play. Throws you have to make them right field. I don't know that BR and Wunsch wants uh, Dalton Wolf from crashing into fences right now. But if you know Dalton, he's going to give you 110%. So 
Oh, one pitch coming from Plasman to Diller. Scores around the bunt. Brings the bat back. Throw down to first base just ahead of the tag as Bond. Well, you're playing right field. Bosselman slapped the tag on Bond as Rams catcher Dalton Wolfram. Not a, definitely not afraid to throw the ball around the field. Long line of catchers here at Sonora to do so. <laughs> one one pitch coming to Stephen Diller. Squares around the bunt again. Bunts it right back to the mound. Plasman up with it. Throws over in time to get Diller down to second base. Goes Bond. Diller does what you got to do when you get in the tournament. Move the runner over. So Bond down to second on the sacrifice. First out. 1-3 on the put out. Devin Morris going to step in. Morris, like we said, drilled an opposite field right in the gap to right field double opposite of Diller in the first inning. Split the outfielders. One hop the wall. First pitch is outside. Ball one. Runner at second here on the top of the second. Streaks lead 4-2. Morris, six homers on the season. Plasman comes set. Pitch comes to Morris. High. Oh, no, it's strike called. Thought it was a little bit outside, but got the benefit of the strike zone there. I'll take care of that swelling. What did Pitch gets away. Not far enough to allow anybody to reach. I lost her sound. I don't know. I'll have to check. Somebody said they can't have. They don't have sound, but we'll check. In between innings, hard to do it as the game is progressing. Two one pitch to Morris. Outside ball three. Three balls and one strike to the number two hitter, Devin Morris. Plasman's 3-1 to Morris inside. Backs him off the plate. Ball four. Morris trots down to first base. Greeks have runners at first and second with one out. That's going to bring up Creighton Kern. Kern with an RBI single in the first, I think as well as a run scored. I don't remember, but I think it was a square. You can't even see it. Yeah. Right. It was screwed. Same way. Um, if we did lose audio, we may have to reset the feed. I'll check here as soon as I get a chance. Plasman comes set. Pitches. A little bit high, I guess. That's what you'll do. Now, I've seen it on TV. Almost, maybe it's just because it's Part of the issue is you got to put the rubber because it looks like pitch is high, ball two. Well, they are. They are because this is put in and then you drag all that stuff in. So you can put that down and put that rubber in. It's probably just have to ruin it. But this maintenance is huge. Three balls and no strikes to Creighton Kern. Forgot my V doesn't work on my keyboard, so I'm trying to type have, and it's coming. It's not coming out have. <laughs> Plasman's 3-0. Strike called. Throw down to first base. Morris just ahead of the tag again. Count to Creighton Kern is... Three balls and a strike. I'll check her out in between innings and see what we got. Foul back this way. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes to the number three hitter, Creighton Kerr. <clears throat> Three two pitch coming. There goes the runner. Strong on and miss. Wolfram bobbles the ball. Can't get it out of his glove. Runners move up. Down the third goes Jet Bond. Down the second goes Devin Morris on the double steal. Up to the plate, number twenty four, Brian Burrows. Kern goes down on strikes. That's the second out of the inning. Brian Burrows steps in. He walked and scored in the four run first inning.
pitch outside. Ball one to Brian Burroughs, the number four hitter, playing at the hot corner at third. 268 for Burroughs. Plasman comes set. Pitch. Strike called. There's a sign in each one one pitch coming from Plasman. Hit shortstop side. Radzik in front of it. Gathers himself. High throw. Bosselman brings her down for the third out. 6 3 on the put out. In the inning for the streaks, they threaten. They do not score. No runs for Archibald. They get one hit. No ram errors. Two left on base. After an inning and a half here at Tenora High School's Groove Field, it is Archibald four and Tenora one. Or Tora 2 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. The law office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back at Tenora, 4-2. Rams and streaks here at Groove Field. Rams trail, 4-2. And we're going to try and reset our feed. Apparently, we did lose sound, I guess, for those of you watching on Facebook. Not sure what happened, actually. Radio seems to be working fine. So we're going to quickly reset our feed. Shouldn't take more than a couple seconds. So if you're watching, just refresh your feed here in about 90 seconds. and Or maybe a little bit longer than 90 seconds. And my computer's being extremely slow here. When you want it to go fast... It doesn't. If you don't care or have a care in the world, you can zip through anything and everything. But we're going to have to reset. Because for whatever reason, our audio on Facebook, the sound was dropped. So, not sure what was up with that. But we're going to fix it. And we're do our best. I guess I should say. Of course, you got to type in a thousand and one things just to reset everything. So, you got to type in, make sure everybody knows that we're resetting right now. So, Plasman will step in for Tenora. Eli. Number seven hitter on the season is steps into the box. Seven, eight, nine for Tenora Plasman, BJ Morlock, and Grady Gusweiler. Three, thirteen for Eli. Wind up and the pitch outside. Ball one. We'll reset the streaks defense in between pitches here. Towns on the mound. Jet ball behind the plate. One zero pitch coming. Strike on the outside corner. Mason Siegel at first, Jaden Tyler at second, Stephen Diller at short, and Brian Burroughs is at third. Dominic Kern and Morris is your streak outfield. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on and missed. Strike two. Towns quickly ahead of Plasman. One ball and two strikes. Towns 1-2. Plasman gets the bat on it, fouls it off over the first base dugout. Sit down there, Mr. Lemkin. Sit down there. Count stays at one and two. So if anybody switched over to Facebook, just let me know that uh, if your audio works. One, two pitch, high and away. Count evens to Plasman, two balls and two strikes. Like the first problem we've had all season, actually. Been, or I believe the first. Been very lucky. 2-2 pitch coming. 
Towns pitched to Plasman. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Plasman for the first out of the inning. Going to bring up the number eight hitter, B.J. Morlock. B.J. Morlock. So B.J. steps in. First pitch to B.J. is high and away. Ball one. Trying to type something in for everybody on the thing as well. Kind of silent. Now 1 0 -oh pitch. High. Ball two. Two -oh pitch coming to Morlock. Next strike call. BJ, nice performance last night on the mound. Pitching very effective two innings. Considering the circumstances for surrounding BJ. Very impressive. 2 1 pitch and strike on the inside corner. Two balls and two strikes again for those of you just joining us and didn't listen last night. BJ lost his grandfather on Sunday. So, condolences to BJ and his, his family. Pitch is fouled off. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Hey, Craig, you have any more cups? What now? Cups for water? Yeah. Do you have any more? <laughs> How many you need? Uh, I don't think I have video. Yeah. Maybe I do. Yeah. Swung on and missed by Morlock. So BJ goes down. Back to back, back, to back strikeouts. Don't bring up Grady Gusweiler. We may have to reset the darn thing again. What the heck's going on here? <laughs> Let's wait for somebody to say it's working or it's not working. Pitches a ball to Grady. Um, but I think the kids drank the water and threw them out instead of hanging on to them. Uh, oh, there we go. Could I have these? You don't mind? You said the right word, kids. Yep, yep. Sometimes this one I can. One old pitch to Gus Weiler. Swung on and missed. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Yep. Magic word right there. So, yeah. hey, sometimes we do too. <laughs> yeah. 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 4 2. Brian is on top. Or Brian. Archibald's on top. Pitch to Grady. Swung on and missed. Strike two. One ball and two strikes to the Ram center fielder, Grady Gusweiler. 255 for Grady on the season. Nine runs batted in. 15 walks, seven steals. Mason Towns. Pitch to Grady's a bit outside. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Hey, I think we got our sound back on Facebook, as far as I can tell. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Grady. Swung on and miss. Town strikes out the side. Down goes Gus Weiler in the inning for the Rams. They go quickly. No runs, no hits, no streak errors. No Rams left on base. Through two. We're at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Crop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard shows Archibald 4 and Tenora 2. We'll be back right after this time out. The Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters is a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters support is shown in many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the team or the organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. Visit them on Facebook at Tenora Athletic Boosters. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 576-8940 Back at Groove Field Got a couple changes here New pitcher for the Rams Cooper Farrell On in relief of Plasman So, so for Cooper This will be his yeah, first right appearance right. At the varsity oh, level this oh, season yeah. So Farrell will Face the streaks 
Plasman goes to second, and Harris goes back to right. So those are your changes for the Rams. BR delaying all of his changes to the home plate umpire. So we'll try and get ours all set too. So Harris goes to right. Plasman goes from the mound to second. And enter Cooper Farrell, his first appearance. I believe his first appearance at the varsity level this season. Covered like almost every game. Not all, but most. Mason Siegel steps in. First pitch is check swing. They appeal. They say no. He doesn't even ask for it. Now he finally does, and he says yes. First he said no. He didn't swing. Wolfram asks a second time, and they look down and ask the first base, the field umpire, and he says yes. Farrell's pitch is low. One ball and one strike to Mason Siegel. He doubled in the first inning. Three doubles in the first inning for the streaks. Farrell's pitch, tap, foul, third base side by the Rams dugout. One of the players scoops it up down there. So after this batter, Mason Siegel will reset the entire Rams defense for you. The sophomore righty Cooper Farrell gets the sign from Dalton Wolfram, winds it up, one two pitch. It's one on, fouled off first base side out of play. Four runs on four hits in the first inning for the streaks. Four runs on five hits for the game. Rams have two runs. They got that in the first inning and did not get a hit. Pitch is a bit high. Count goes even at two balls and two strikes. Thanks for joining us here on Sonora Rams Live. Sorry about that audio issue on Facebook. We had to reset. Okay, good, good, good. 2-2 pitch. Swung on. Siegel just got a piece of it. Fouls it straight back. He stays alive. 367, 12 RBIs for Siegel. Carson Dominic awaits on deck. Farrell's 2-2. Breaking ball up and in. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. As we said, Coach Renolette realizing has a sectional final game on Friday. Can't exhaust too many arms that he may need on Friday. This is why we're seeing Cooper Farrell early. Breaking ball up and in. Siegel works a leadoff walk after being down. No balls and two strikes. Carson Dominic going to step in. Dominic with an RBI on a fielder's choice in inning number one. And a ground ball. Hard ground ball to Caden Radzik at short. Okay. All right, buddy. Uh, we're down four to two uh, to Archibald in the top of three. Pitch is high. Ball one. So for Eli Plasman, his day is done. He worked two innings, gave up four runs. That All four runs were earned. Four hits. Did not strike anybody out and walked one. Pitch ground ball. Third base side. Ward up with it. Over to second for the force out. Over to first for the twin killing. Even after Ward bobbled it. He scooped it up, fired down to second to Eli Plasman for the force out. Plasman turned the double play. Nice throw over to Hunter Bosselman at first. 5-4-3 on the twin killing. Just like that, there's two outs here in the top of the third. Jaden Seiler steps in. Seiler, 229 with 10 RBIs on the season. Farrell winds it up. First pitch outside. Ball one. No, no. Thank you, Pittsburgh Sioux. Yes. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if it just stopped working or it didn't work from the beginning. During the pregame test, it worked. Farrell's pitch, a little bit low. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to the number seven hitter, second baseman, Jaden Seiler. Micah Nossiger awaits on deck for the streaks. Farrell's pitch, swung on and missed. Two balls and a strike. And of course, for those of you to listen during basketball. You already know, but when I get a chance, I'll have the origin of the nickname, the Blue Streaks, which was my basketball partner, Michael Sebring's favorite part of the season. <laughs> pitch was a ball low, three balls and one strike. The pitch to Siler. 
Let's see, deep fly ball to right field. It's gone. Siler sends it over the right field fence for a solo home run. That gives the Archibald Blue Streaks a five to two lead. And for Siler on the season, looking, I think that's his first home run. That is Siler's first home run of the season. Mackenhoff-Sigger grounded to second in the first. Five two streaks here in the top of the third. Farrell's pitch. Just a bit low. Ball one. Farrell's 1 0 coming to Micah. Swung on and missed. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Very impressed by Micah during the basketball season. Kind of like an old school, like Kevin McHale player. You don't really see too much anymore. A lot of nice low post move for Micah, if I remember right. Swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes. So Micah was very impressive in our game over at Archibald. Strike three called. Nossiger goes down on strikes looking for the third out in the inning. But Archibald gets on the board. The solo homer by Siler gives him one run. That was the only hit. No Ram errors. Nobody left on base. We're through two and a half over here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Archibald Blue Streaks five. And the Sonora Rams two on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. We'll be back right after this. Time out. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Back at Grew Field here at Tenor High School. Streaks with a 5-2 lead. Downs has struck out four through two innings and has not allowed a hit. Two runs, just one of those are earned. So the origin of the nickname, the Blue Streaks, the Rams will send up one, two, and three, top of the order for the Rams. Nickname was coined by former Archibald coach M.A. Farber, who was the head coach at Archibald between 1930 and 1949. After watching Sandusky play, he liked their nickname, the Blue Streaks. Knowing that the teams probably would never play because of their difference in school size, he gave the nickname to Archibald in 1933. Prior to that, Archibald was just known as the Archibald team. Some of the fathers back in the 1910s wanted to be the Archibald Germans because most of the players at the time had a German origin, but that name never caught on. <laughs> Pitch to Mosier was a strike, so that is the origin of the nickname, the Blue Streaks. Pitch to Mosier as the wind picked up again. And as John said, that home run by Siler, he got all of it, but the wind has really picked up here in the last 20 minutes at uh, Tenora High School. Going directly out to right field. Mosier smashes it right back through the box in the center field for a single. Mosier starts the third with a smash back through Towns. Radzik's going to step in. Caden Radzik, the Rams shortstop, walked in the first inning. Caden, 365, 23 runs, batted in 19 stolen bases on the season. And you can probably occasionally hear it in our crowd mic down below. The wind went from zero to about 20. Like the snap of the fingers. 
It was me, John. Announcer's jinx. I said, the wind never, the wind is always blowing at Sonora High School, <laughs> and there was no wind, and boom, we have wind. Mother Nature was listening above. Towns pitch. Strike called to Radzik. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Mosher led off the inning with the single. He's on it first. He has 16 steals on the season. Right. <laughs> 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Radzik from Towns. That stays high. Two balls and a strike. Quite a few streaks sprayed about northwest Ohio with the collegiate level. We'll run down those here in a second. 2-1 pitch from Towns to Radzik. Radzik fouls it back. Got Jaron Williams, but more importantly, Cade Kern is at Ohio State. And every time you turn around, you see a highlight from Cade down there at for the Ohio State Buckeye team. Here we go, one. So a fantastic season by Cade down at OSU. 2-2 pitch coming to Radzik. Hit the shortstop side. Diller up with it or to second for the force out. Relay in time for the double play. 6-4-3 on the twin killing. Radzik grounds into the double play and just like that there's Two outs. Dalton Wolfram's going to step in. Dalton stole two bases and scored the second Rams run in the first inning. Reached on a fielder's choice. Other players for Archibald, former streaks. At Bowling Green, Regal Ramos and DJ Newman pitched to Wolfram. Is a bit high. Ball one. And at Toledo, Jaron Williams having a heck of a season. He's at the top of the NCAA leaderboard in quite a few categories. Actually leads the nation in stolen bases. That pitches outside to Dalton Wolfram. Two balls and no strikes to Dalton. He's got 48 steals, which leads Division I baseball in steals. 2-0 pitches, foul back. Two balls and one strike. So there you are, streaks doing good things in the area college baseball scene. Cade Kerr OSU, Jaron Williams at Toledo and Regal Ramos and DJ Newman at Bowling Green. Pitching for the Falcons. Outside just misses. Newman like Derek Gravis here at Tenora was a all-state three-sport athlete. You don't hardly see that anymore anywhere. 3-1 pitch to Wolfram. Up and in. Whoa! They called that a strike. Cal goes full at 3-2. and two. That looked up and in to Wolfram. Karen Warren on deck for Tenora. Mason Towns gets the sign. The lefty fires. Wolfram taps it. Third base side just foul. Third baseman Brian Burroughs picked it up. It actually would have been a close play at first base because Wolfram took off like a jet down there. Comes back, fetches the bat. It's going to step back in the box with a full count. Nobody on. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. It's 5-2 Archibald. Rams coming in at 19-4. 3-2 pitch. Just misses outside. So Wolfram draws a two-out walk. Rams' last loss came about three and a half weeks ago. That was at Clyde on a Saturday. That was a 3-2 loss, actually. The game was decided on a balk, I believe, in the sixth inning. John said, that's right, he did. It was a chilly, it was a cold, but it was a chilly day in, in Clyda, and balk was called because he blew on his hand. Towns pitch, misses outside to Taryn Ward. Ward struck out in the first, comes in with a 349 average with 15 RBIs. Coach Renolette coaching at third. Reed Anders coaching at first for Tenora. Towns 1-0 pitch coming to Taryn Ward. Oh, hit him on the top of the helmet. Taryn flips the bat away. He's going to take a slow walk down to first base. Make sure Taryn's all right. BR's down, telling Reed to check on him. Make sure that Taryn's okay. Took that one right off the... Taryn's kind of pointing to the back side of his helmet, so he turns in time and hit the helmet. So Taryn down to first base after getting hit by the pitch. Dalton Wolfram goes down to second. Luke Harris will head to the plate. Harris walked in the first. 290 for Luke. 13 runs batted in. 
Karen appears to be all right. Leads away from first. Dalton leads away from second. Pitch to Harris. Hits him in the shoulder. So that's going to load him up. Wolfram goes to third. Ward down to second. Harris heads to first after being hit by the pitch. That's the third hitter to be hit. Coach Salgo asks for time. He heads out of the first base dugout. He's going to have a conversation with Mason Towns and his Blue Streak infield. For Tenora, Hunter Bosselman is going to step to the plate with two outs and the bases full of Rams with the Archibald Blue Streaks reading, leading 5-2 to two here in the bottom of the third. Five runs on six hits for Archibald. Two runs on just one hit for the Rams. So coming into the game, Towns only had, I believe, two hit batters. He's hit three here today. For those of you popping in, appreciate you joining us here on Snow Rams Live. Regular season finale here at Groove Field. Rams will be back here Friday in the semifinals versus either Delta or Ottawa Hills. Towns comes set. Or he's going to actually use the windup with the bases loaded. Pitch way outside. Nice stop by Jet Bond. Eli Plasman on deck for Tenora. Towns pitch. Strike. Called. Count 200 Bosselman. The Rams first base on this. One and one. Two outs. No place to put Bosselman. Ram on every base as they trail by three here in the third. Towns pitch. Bosselman fouls it back. One ball and two strikes to Hunter. Bosselman steps back in. Here comes the pitch from Towns. Hits it shortstop side. Nice stop. Oh, actually went under the glove of the shortstop Diller. That's going to play two. Scoring on the play is Wolfram and Ward. Harris stops at second. Bosselman is on with a hard single. Two RBIs on the play. That was a shot in the hole. Diller tried to backhand it. I think it went hit the side of his glove or went under his glove, one or the other. Regardless, had he field it, I think he would have had a tough play no matter even if he did field it. So Plasman steps in. Rams trail by one now. Five to four. Pitch to Eli is a strike. Just like that, the Rams are right back in the contest, trailing by one. Towns comes set. Pitch to Plasmans. Long on, fouled off first base side out of play. Eli quickly down, no balls and two strikes. He struck out in the second. Towns gets the sign from Vaughn. Comes set. 0-2. High and away. Off the catcher's glove to the backstop it goes. He can't find it. Here comes Harris. Thought about it. BR put the put the stop sign on that, but Harris came around the bag with a head full of steam. The ball deflected all the way over to the first base on deck circle, so the runners move up. Harris at third. Bosselman down to second. Count to Eli Plasman as a ball and two strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. 5-4 Archibald. 1-2 pitch. Plasman sends a drive into center field. Kern's got a plane on the hop. Here comes Harris to tie it. Here comes the run for the lead. Bosselman scores. Plasman reached out, put the bat on the ball. Creighton Kern came in. Had the plate on a hop. Rams with a four spot here in the third have grabbed a six to five lead on back to back two RBI singles by Plasman and Bosselman. So Eli went down to second on the throw to the plate. BJ Morlock's going to step in. BJ struck out in the second inning. He said, for those of you just joining us, BJ, a heck of a performance on the mound last night, came in in relief. Pitched two solid innings for the Rams. Hounds come set. Pitch to Morlock. Strike on the outside corner. 
Plasman down a second. Huge clutch hit for Eli. BJ 138 pitches way up there. Ball and save that one from hitting the backstop. Towns has 65 pitches, 34 strikes. Has hit three batters. 1-1 one, one pitch from Towns to Morlot. Swung on and miss. Strike two. One ball and two strikes to BJ. Two outs. Rams lead 6-5 here in the bottom of the third. Plasman leads away from second. Towns comes set. Gets the sign. Looks back at Plasman. 1-2 pitch. Morlock sends a foul ball first base side. It's out of play. <laughs> With any luck, as we said, these two teams will meet again in the district finals that will be held at Defiance High School on the 27th at 12 p.m. I assume that's a Saturday. One-two pitch to Morlock. Swung on, fouled off again. First base side out of play. Come on, boy, stay alive in here. Come on, boy, stay alive. <clears throat> One ball, two strike pitch. Coming. Towns comes set. Looks back at Plasman. To the plate. Pitch. Low in the, in the well, would be dirt. <laughs> if it was in the pebbles, I should say. Nice stop by Jet Bond. Turf infield here at Sonora. Actually honored the group family last night. After senior day. 2-2 two, two pitch. Strike. Three call. Morlock caught looking. Goes down on strikes. In the inning for the Rams, they take the lead. Tora scores four runs. And they do so on three base hits. No errors. One left on base. Heading to the fourth inning. It's a brand new game here at Tenora High School's Groove Field. Tenora 6 and Archibald 5 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Tedora Rams Live. Oklahoma Tavern, located in downtown Oklahoma, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and... Enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Oklahoma Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Oklahoma Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back at Tenora High School's group field, Rams have a 6-5 to five lead as we head to the top of the fourth inning for Archibald. 9-1-2 and two to face Cooper Farrell, Jet Bond. Then the top, Stephen Diller and Devin Morris, your scheduled hitters. Ty Wimpkin comes in to play first base for the Rams, in place of Hunter Bosselman. Which we've seen throughout the last couple of weeks, Ty will come in for a couple of innings. Hunter comes back out, usually about the fifth or sixth. Farrell winds it up. First pitch, swung on. Soft liner in foul territory right by the coach's box. Wimpkin couldn't get there in time. Vaughn. It's on a long single <coughs> down the left side in his first at bat. Got as far as third base. Farrell's pitch, a little bit low. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Farrell came in relief of Eli Plasman. In the top of the third. Breaking ball by Farrell's popped up. Foul territory. Wolfram throws a mask away. Gets underneath it. Puts it away for out number one. Retiring Jet Bond in foul territory. Tomorrow we'll be at 
Holland, where the Lady Rams will take on Oak Harbor. Oak Harbor is the number one seed. The Lady Rams are the number three seed. So we'll be at Oak Harbor tomorrow. First pitch is set for 4 o'clock. So we'll have the signs excavating pregame about 3.40. Pitch to Diller. Swung on, driven deep left field. Mosier cruises back and puts it away. Diller gave it a ride. Mosier took about 8, 10 steps back. Camped underneath it and put it away for out number two. Deep out for Stephen Diller. Devin Morris steps in. Morris doubled. Had an RBI double in the first and scored a run. Walked and stole a base in the second. Farrell's pitch to Morris. Tapper foul down the first base side. Out of play. Heads <coughs> into the bullpen area. No way you don't know your kids are doing There's no way you miss that sign in the dugout that says no seed. No balls and one strike. Cooper Farrell winds it up. Pitch coming to Morris. Breaking balls just misses high. One ball and one strike. Two outs, bases empty for the streaks. For the first time, they trail six to five. Farrell's pitch. Lined into right center field for a solid base hit. Morris smoked it. Morris is two at bats. Very effective single and a double. Going to bring up the number three hitter, Creighton Kern. Kern 508. Coming into the contest, had a RBI single and scored in the first, struck out in the second. Runner at first, Morris, two outs. Farrell on the mound, pitches from the set position. Farrell looks at the runner. Comes to the plate, ground ball, shortstop side. Razik scoops it up, underhands to Plasman at second for the force out. Six, four on the put out for the third out in the inning for Archibald. They did not score a run. No runs on one hit. No Ram errors and one blue streak left on base. Through three and a half innings here at Group Field at Sonora High School, Rams lead 6-5 on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Like, uh, Grady Gusweiler. Bottom of the fourth inning we go. And for Tenora, they'll send the number nine hitter, Grady Gusweiler. Then the top of the order, Aiden Mosher and Caden Razik to face Mason Towns. Towns still in the game, had a rough last inning. But Coach Salgo still staying with Towns. Lefty winds it up. First pitch is high and away to Grady's. Ball one. Grady struck out in the second. Towns gets the sign, comes set, pitch to Grady, inside, strike, call. That's all right, that's all Grady didn't that's think so. Come on, Grady. <laughs> Count even had a ball in the strike, just the reaction on his face was <laughs> priceless. Towns 1-1, one, one, pitch to Grady. That one's low, ball two. Senior Towns on the hill for the Blue Streaks. Winds it up. 2-1 pitch coming to Grady. Grady sends a high fly ball on the infield. Shortstop Steven Diller calls for it. Gets underneath it. Puts it away for out number one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. Mosier was hit by a pitch to start the Rams bottom of the first inning. Came around to score. And he singled in the third. Yeah, you are. Yes, he will. 
It's a bad one. Ask me why they don't have that phone right here. Why don't they have that phone? Because you got it. Because you got it. Downs gets the sign from Jet Ball and comes set. Pitches high. Ball one. What's this mean? Jake, is that your kid? No. <laughs> That's a 6-5, Rams lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pitch outside. Two balls and no strikes to the Rams. Leadoff hitter, left fielder, Aiden Mosher. Two zero pitch coming to Mosher from Towns. Strike, call. Two balls and a strike to Aiden Mosher. Pitches up and in. Three balls and a strike. I wish you were going. Done my bad. Four in the first for Archibald. One in the third for their five. Two in the first and four in the third for Tenora Six. Six five Rams lead here in the fourth. Pitch to Mosier. Up and in. Ball four. Mosier draws a one out walk. So Aiden heads down to first base. Mosier pretty much ever is everything covered. Was hit by a pitch in the first, singled in the third, and has walked here in the fourth. Caden Radzik grounded into a 6-4-3 double play his last at bat. Walked in the first. Towns come set. Mosier. Decent lead over there. First pitch to Radzik is a strike. With the lefty on the mound, Mosier doesn't get as big as lead as he normally does. He's about a half a foot short. The lead he normally takes. Aiden takes off. Radzik swings and misses. Throw down is a bit high. Mosier in with the stolen base. Diller covering from the shortstop position. Took the high throw. Tried to reach between his leg and slapped the tag on Mosier as he was coming down. So Mosier... <coughs> In with his 17th stolen base on the season. Radzik swung on the pitch just to kind of throw some interference. I mean, it wasn't interference. He just tried to throw some interference. <laughs> that pitch is up and away. One ball and two strikes. One out. Rams have a runner at second. Leading 6-5. to five. Dalton Wolfram awaits on deck. One, two, pitch from Towns to Radzik. Up and away, ball two. Count evens, two balls and two strikes to the Rams' junior shortstop, Caden Radzik. Caden, named second team all GMC today. Try and, like you said, I give it a free moment, I'll run through the entire first team. Two, two pitch, there goes Mosier. Radzik hits it to short. Dillers only plays to first. Throws across in time. Mosier going on the pitch, winds up at third. Radzik grounds out 6-3 for out number two. First team was Cooper Winslick, Brevin Anderson, both from Wayne Trace, Abe Delano from Ayersville, Alex Shoblin from Tenora, Corey Everett from Edgerton, Ethan Leachty from Antwerp, Blake Hornstein from Ayersville, Ethan Foltz from Paulding, Jackson Grind from Fairview, and Dalton Wolfram from Tenora. That's your first team, all GMC. Dalton Wolfram steps in now, pitches outside, ball one. Dalton reached on a fielder's choice and scored in the first, also stole the base, and then walked and came around to score in the third. Mosier leads from third. Pitch from Towns is outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes to the Rams' backstop. Dalton Wolfram. Karen Ward on deck. 2-0 pitch from Towns coming to Wolfram. High and away. Ball three. Aiden Moser dancing around trying to distract Towns at third. Three oh pitch coming. Towns comes set. Here comes the pitch. Inside corner. Strike called. If you're a right handed batter and the ball's on the inside, inside corner, it pretty well is going to be a strike. Towns 3-1 to Wolfram. Strike two to Dalton. 3-0 to 3-2. Towns has fought back. Count goes full to Dalton Wolfram. 
3-2 pitch coming to Dalton. Swung on, fouled off first base side. First baseman giving chase and can't get to it as it hits the base of the fence on the first base side. Mason Siegel, nice effort over there by the streaks. Just ran out of room. So we'll do the 3-2 all over again. Downs come set. Mosier dances around the third. 3-2 pitch to Wolfram. Swung on, hit center field. In comes Kern right at him. Puts it away. Wolfram nailed it right on the nose. Unfortunately, it landed right into the arm, or right into the glove of center fielder Creighton Kern. F8 on the putout. In the inning, the Rams threaten. They do not score. Get a runner as far as third. No runs for Tenora. No hits, no streak errors, one left on base. We're through four innings of play here at Group Field. 6-5 Tenora on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Van Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Van Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Van Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. 6-5 Rams as we head to the top of the fifth inning here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. For the streaks, they're going to send up 4-5-6. and six. Burroughs, Siegel, and Dominic to face Cooper Farrell. Farrell's first appearance at the varsity level this season has pitched very effectively. We'll look at the second team all GMC team while we have a split second here. Caden Radzik from Tenora, Corey Herman from Edgerton, Colton Schooley from Fairview, Brevin Williams also from Fairview on the second team, Parker Moore, Tyler Parker Moore from Antwerp, Tyler Davis from Wayne Trace, Nathan Swang from Edgerton, Maverick Keysberry from Hicksville, Kale Winans from Wayne Trace, and Wesson McGuire round out your second team all GMC. Brian Burroughs steps in. First pitch to Burroughs from Farrell is a bit high. Ball one. Burroughs walked and scored in the first, grounded out to Radzik in the second. Farrell's pitch catches the corner. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Okay, we got Top of the fifth, 6-5 Tenora. Rams took the lead with a four-run third inning. Farrell's pitch. Just, oh, outside corner. <laughs> Burrell steps out, kind of smiles, steps back in. One-two pitch coming from Farrell to Burrows. He swings away because he knows if he takes that one, he's going to get punched out. That was a little bit outside, but Burrows isn't taking any chances. One ball and two strikes to the number four hitter, third baseman, Brian Burrows. Farrell's pitch. Swung on. Foul behind the plate. Wolfram sheds the mask, gets underneath it, puts it away for out number one. Second put out for Dalton Wolfram behind the plate. Gonna bring up Mason Siegel. Siegel doubled in the first inning and walked in the third. Cooper Farrell for his first outing as a varsity player pitching very well. Farrell winds it up. First pitch, breaking ball, fouled off, first base side, out of play. Siegel, 367, coming in. That pitch is a ball. Count evens at the ball on the strike. One out. Base is empty. Top of the fifth. 6-5 Rams. Farrell's 1-1. Swung on. Little dribbler. First base side. Webkin has the ball go through his legs. Plasman gets it. Falls down. Gets back up. Farrell covers the base for the out. What a play for Tenora. Wimpton came off the bag. It was a little slow roller. Went through his legs. Plasman was alert to back it up. Plasman slipped and fell. Fell 
Threw from his knees to Cooper Farrell covering the base. It's like a 3-4-1 put out for out number two. Stepping in is Dominic. He sends one to deep center field. Gus Weiler on his horse goes back, stumbles a bit, but puts it away. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, there's three out. So Dominic sends it to deep center field. Gus Weiler on his horse. Puts it away. No runs, no hits, no ram errors. And nobody left for the streaks in the fifth. We're going to head to the bottom of the fifth inning here at Sonora High School with the Rams leading the Archibald Blue Streaks by a score of 6-5 to five on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Signs Excavating at Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, bring up Brad, 419 419- 9481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Bottom of the fifth we go already. Terran Ward, Luke Harris, and Hunter Bosselman to face Mason Towns. Towns still on the mound. Has 93 pitches through four, 49 strikes. He's allowed two hits, allowed six runs, just one earned run. He struck out four, or struck out five and walked four. It has three wild pitches. So Rams senior third baseman, Terran Ward, Going to step into the right-hand batter's box. Struck out in the first, was hit by a pitch, and scored in the third. <laughs> Towns winds it up. The lefty comes set, fires to the plate, high and away. Last time at the plate, Taron got hit in the kind of the side slash back of the helmet, which started the Rams' four-run rally in the third. They lead 6-5 here in the bottom of the fifth. Towns pitched to Ward. Is high and away, ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Taryn Ward. Time out by Coach Salgo. I think we're going to have a pitching change. Have a new first baseman coming in. Yes, that's going to be it for Towns as Coach Salgo takes the ball. We'll be back with all the changes and we'll do it right after this. Towns can lose it. He cannot win it. High standards, hard work, sincerity. For the past 37 years, those have been the day-to-day ideals behind Bat and Stevens, regarded as one of the finest auto body repair shops in the six-county area. Our technicians understand how you feel about your vehicle, so they're trained to know your automobile inside and out. Bat and Stevens will provide you with fine workmanship at a fair price. We will work closely with you to ensure your complete satisfaction. We believe full service is one of the keys to complete collision repair. Once your vehicle enters our shop, you can be sure it is handled with the utmost attention to detail at every phase of the repair process. Our skilled professionals are committed to this high standard of quality on every job, from small dings to major collision damage, whether it is just fitting decorative trim pieces or restoring your vehicle's entire structure. We work on all makes and models, foreign and domestic, including recreational vehicles. Our state-of-the-art equipment helps us perform every kind of job with a lifetime guarantee. Free estimates can be obtained anytime, and loaner cards are available by appointment. Batten Stevens Body Shop has also been selected as the 2020 Crescent News Reader's Choice Awards Favorite Body Shop in the Six County Area. Batten Stevens Body Shop, located in downtown Jewel, Ohio. 419-497-3111. That's 419-497-3111. Changes for the streaks. Mason Siegel, who was at first base, comes in to pitch, replacing Mason Towns. And Zach Short comes off the bench to play at first base for Siegel. Five and a third innings. He's allowed two hits. Does not have a earned run. He has walked one and struck out three. He has hit two batters. So Mason Towns' night is over. Slippery Terran Ward's going to step in. He has a two ball and no strike count. Did, did you choose Towns pitched four innings, two hits, six runs, one earned, struck out five, walked four. 
I believe if this batter is walked, that the walk will actually go to Towns. Jet Bond comes out, has a talk with the new pitcher, Mason Siegel. Home plate umpire goes over to talk to the Archibald bench, bench coaches, I should say. Make sure they got all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. 6-5 Rams here in the bottom of the fifth. Two balls and no strike count inherited by Mason Siegel. He winds it up. The righty fires. Strike to Karen Ward on the inside corner. Siegel the junior. Sounds to me a little bit like it should be like pitch. Ground ball, third base side. Burrows up with it. Throws across. Boy, oh boy, just nipped. Ward, he looked, oh, man, oh man, uh, challenge that play if you could. So Ward grounds out 5-3, and boy, that was close. Burrow kind of took an extra step in there and almost cost him. Speaking of reviews, actually, which we'll get to now that Luke Harris steps in, it goes hand in hand. Harris walked in the first, was hit, and scored a run in the third. First pitch to Luke is a strike. Pitch to Harris, swung on, hit third base side. Burroughs has that one, hops again, throws across. This one has a little bit more mustard on it. Harris has retired 5-3 for the second putout. What I was going to say was, next season in basketball, Rule change across the board in high school basketball. I believe once a team gets five fouls, there is no more one and one. You're just going to shoot two free throws. So each quarter. So before it was seven fouls and a half. Sent you to the bonus. You shot the one and one until you got to the tenth team foul. Now it's going to go by quarter. As soon as a team gets five team fouls per quarter. I believe starting with the fifth team foul, they'll be shooting two shots. So... National Federation of High School voted that in and went into effect this coming basketball season. Strike to Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman steps in, batting 313. Hunter struck out in the second, had a two RBI single in the third. Pitches low and away. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Bases empty, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Rams lead 6 5. Siegel's pitch catches the corner. Strike two. Mason Siegel on a relief of Mason Towns. Bosselman hits a shortstop side. Diller up with it. Throws across in time. Three ground balls on the infield. Two to the third baseman and one to the shortstop. 6-3 on the put out. Rams go quickly in the fifth. No runs, no hits, no streak errors. Nobody left on base. To the sixth inning we go here at Group Field. Tenora six. Archibald five. On your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. And we're back. Cooper Farrell still on the mound, pitching very effective in the relief of Eli Plasma. And Eli still dealing with that sprained ankle. Made that play last inning up there, and I noticed that Eli was a little bit limping gingerly back to his second base position. Eli started Went two innings, allowed four runs, all earned, did not strike anybody out, and walked one. Cooper Farrell, starting his fourth inning of work, has worked three innings, allowed just two hits, one run. That was earned, walked one, and struck out one. And for the streaks, 7-8-9, Siler, Nafziger, and Bond to face the sophomore righty, Cooper Farrell. Earl winds it up. First pitch hit. Third base side just outside the bag of third. Ward scoops it up. But it was foul, says the home plate umpire. 
We haven't got a nice little staff building for next year. If you kind of take a deep dive into it over the last couple weeks. Connor Wolfram, nice start last night. Got Shoblin, Bosselman. Hey, Jake the Snake. Yes. I mean, it's looking, looking really nice. 24. Okay. Oh, one pitch coming. 24 for about two Siler. Five miles. Yeah. Outside. We'll count evens at a ball and a strike. Last at bat. Siler smoked one deep. That's fair. Yep. Over the right field fence for a solo home run. He's taking my one one pitch from Farrell. Siler taps it foul. Third base side into the Rams dugout. Grabbed by Ty Wimpkin over there. One ball and two strikes. Hunter Bosselin back in the game at first. Wimpkin back to the bench. Oh, well, he was. Bosselman, Plasman, Radzik, and Ward on the infield. Oh, okay. Pitch is drilled in the center field. One hop in front of the center fielder, Grady Gusweiler, Jaden Seiler, with a leadoff single here to start the streak six as they trail by one, six to five. Mike Nossiger is going to step in. He is 0 for 2, struck out looking his last plate appearance. Hey, we'll be back. Thanks, sir. Okay, sure. Meeting you, sir. Yes, sir. Rams outfield, re reset that. Mosier in left, Gus Weiler in center, and Harris back to his natural position in right. Farrell from the set position. Seiler, not really a big lead over there. Pitch, tap third base side. Ward the second for the force out. Relay, Plasman goes down. They called touchdown Jesus. Cut on fire. Throw to first base. Seiler tried to break up the double play. Slid into Plasman at second. Coach BR pops out of the dugout to check on the senior second baseman. Eli gives him a thumbs up. BR turns around and heads back to the dugout. So ground ball to Ward. Threw down to second. Plasman got the force there on Seiler. Nossiger on it first on the fielder's choice. Five to four for out number one. Up to the plate, number eight, Jet. Bond. So the number nine hitter, Jet Bond, steps in. Jet with a single in the second and grounded to, or popped out to the catcher in the fourth. Got a pinch runner for Archibald. My group battle out there. I actually don't have him on my roster. I didn't take a picture of the lineup. I probably should have done it. To our pinch runner, number 10, leads away from first. I feel like it's JV basketball. <laughs> Strike. No, it was a bit high. Farrell did not get the pitch call. One ball and no strikes to Jet Bond. Throw over to first base. Back is the runner at first. 6-5 Rams here in the top of the six. One out. Runner at first. One ball and no strike. Count to Bond. Here comes the pitch. That's high ball two. Action in the Rams bullpen. Mason McQuillan, I believe, looking from a long ways away. Pitches hit deep. Right field. That's going to head to the wall. Harris back there scoops it up. Here comes the pitch runner. He hits third. He's going to try and score. Throw to the plate is off. Game is tied on the double by Jet Bond. We are tied at six. Up to the plate, number six, Stephen Diller. Top of the lineup, Stephen Diller. Chance to give the streaks the lead. Diller, 280 coming in. Doubled and scored in the first. Sacrifice in the second. Flew out to Mosier deep. Left field. Coach Renolette heads to the mound. That may be all for Cooper. Takes the ball and we'll have the pitching change and we'll do it right after this from Pat Stevens. High standards, hard work, sincerity. For the past 37 years, those have been the day-to-day -day ideals behind Bat and Stevens, regarded as one of the finest auto body repair shops in the six-county area. Our technicians understand how you feel about your vehicle, so they're trained to know your automobile inside and out. Bat and Stevens will provide you with fine workmanship at a fair price. We will work closely with you to ensure your complete satisfaction. We believe full service is one of the keys to complete collision repair. 
Once your vehicle enters our shop, you can be sure it is handled with the utmost attention to detail at every phase of the repair process. Our skilled professionals are committed to this high standard of quality on every job, from small dings to major collision damage. Whether it is just fitting decorative trim pieces or restoring your vehicle's entire structure, we work on all makes and models, foreign and domestic, including recreational vehicles. Our state-of-the-art equipment helps us perform every kind of job with a lifetime guarantee. Free estimates can be obtained anytime and loaner cars are available by appointment. Patton Stevens Body Shop has also been selected as the 2020 Crescent News Reader's Choice Awards Favorite Body Shop in the Six County Area. Patton Stevens Body Shop, located in downtown Jewel, Ohio. 419-497-3111. That's 419-497-3111. Back at Sonora High School, brand new game. We are tied at six. Streets with the runner in scoring position at second. That was Jordan Rodriguez, the pinch runner, who scored all the way from first on the double, opposite field double by Jet Bond. And now if these stats are correct, which I assume they are, I got them from Ryan. Bond coming into the game was 083. Just 12 at bats on the season, but 083 is still 083. And he has a single and a double. And he is at second base. Mason McQuillan will be your new pitcher. Five and a third for Mason. He's allowed one run. That was earned. Two hits, walked three, and he struck out five. ERA of 1.32. Last two outings for Mason. Last Tuesday at Wasion. And then again here Saturday versus Miller City. Very effective for the sophomore, Mason McQuillan. Like I said, Rams got a nice staff building. A bunch of sophomore arms here. First pitch, swung on and fouled into the glove. Diller, the leadoff hitter for the streaks. A chance to give them a lead. Tight to six here in the top of the six. One out, runner leads from second, Bond. McQuillan gets the sign. He pitches from the far first base side of the pitching rubber. Swung on and missed. Nice breaking ball for Mason. I think Mason unofficially probably hits at least, I want to say low to mid 80s at times on his fastball. He can bring it. 0-2 pitch coming from McQuillan to Diller. He looks back at Bond at second. Here comes the pitch. Low off the glove of Wolfram. Down to third goes Bond with just one out now. A little bit wild there for Mason. So the go-ahead run is at third with one out. One ball and two strikes to Steven Diller. See what BR wants to do with the infield. Infield is in at the center positions. First and third are at the cut of the grass. One-two pitch from Diller. Quillen nods. Pitch to Diller. Tap foul, third base side into the Rams dugout. Count stays at one and two. Four in the first, one in the third, one here in the sixth for the streaks. They have the go-ahead run at third for Tenora. Two in the first, four in the third for their six. Just three hits for the Rams. McQuillan, long look in, gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. One, two pitch coming to Diller. Outside, count evens at two balls and two strikes. If you want to play a game before the tournament starts, this is the type of game you want to play, I guess. Even though neither team is really, honestly, playing to win. You want to win. You're just not trying to delete your pitching staff or have any injuries. Foul at the plate. Count stays even. Two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter, Stephen Diller, Devin Morris on deck. Perfect situational baseball for these two teams as you head into the tournament play. Probably going to see a situation like this or two in the semifinals. Or sectional finals and district semifinals. Providing both teams make it there. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Diller. Runner leads from third Bond. Struck him out. Huge strikeout for McQuillan. Kind of... Handcuffed Diller, pitched it inside, kind of rode it on the fence of Diller. Strikeout for McClellan's his first. That's a second out of the inning. Devin Morris steps in. Morris has been on base all three times.
timeout. And I was wondering what they're going to do because BR knows Morris can give the streaks the lead just like that. They may intentionally walk Devin Morris here. But then again, you're going to pitch to Creighton Kern next. So you choose your poison here. You face Morris or you face Kern. I assume you want to face Morris. Kern with a 508 average. Morris, 298. But like I said, Morris with six home runs on the season. He's been on base every single time. Doubled in the first. Walked in the second and singled in the fourth. And every ball off his bat has been a rocket here today. McQuillan climbs atop the mound here at Groove Field. Go ahead, runs at third for Archibald. Jet Bond tied the game at six. Here in the six, McQuillan winds it up. First pitch to Morris. A bit high. One ball and no strikes to the right fielder, Devin Morris. I think Morris has been a three-year starter, if I can remember right. Very impressive from Devin. McQuillan winds it up. Pitch to Morris. Strike on the inside corner. Evens the count at a ball and a strike. Two outs here in the six. Tied at six. Ball on at third for Archibald. That's the go-ahead run. McQuillan's 1-1 pitch to Devin Morris. Check swing just a bit low. Two balls and a strike. Again, tomorrow we'll be at Holland Springfield. Springfield High School in Holland for the Lady Rams. Sectional final game. McQuillan's 2-1. Swung on and miss. Two balls and two strikes. <laughs> Morris <laughs> Kind of stepped out of the batter's box and kind of shook the cobwebs out a bit. I don't think he expected that from Mason. McQuillan's 2-2 pitch coming to Devin Morris. Vaughn leads from third. Here it comes. Drill just inside the line at first. That's going to score the go-ahead run. Morris stops at second. That was just inside the line down the first base bag. Morris with a double gives the streaks a 7-6 lead scoring Jet Bond. McQuillan, I think the pitch came just a bit more inside than he wanted. If you're a left-handed batter, you love those low inside pitches and that's exactly where McQuillan put it. Creighton Kern's going to step in. Kern Singled, stole the base, scored, and had an RBI in the first. Struck out in the second. Grounded to Radzik in the fourth. Streaks with a 7-6 lead here at the top of the sixth. Pitch. Nice backhand save there by Dalton Wolfram. Saved a wild pitch. Actually, the wild pitch set up that. I think he would have scored regardless from second, obviously. So the run is earned. 1-0 pitch from McQuillan outside ball two. Two balls and no strikes to the number three hitter, center fielder, Creighton Kern. Sophomore righty, Mason McQuillan, the third pitcher to work here for the Rams. Followed Cooper Farrell, who pitched really nice. Pitch is low. Again, a nice stop by the Rams backstop. Dalton Wolfram definitely giving the workout here the last couple of innings. We'll be back here Friday. The Rams will play either Delta or Ottawa Hills. 3-0 pitch coming to Creighton Kern. Quill looks back at the runner. That pitch is outside. So that may have been the intentional, unintentional walk there. So Kern goes down the first. That puts streaks runners at first and second. Morris at second. Kern at first. Going to bring up Brian Burrows. Burrows scored in the first. Grounded to Razik is short in the second. And popped out in foul territory to Dalton Wolfram behind the plate in the fifth. Burrows, 268 on the season. Streaks have runners at first and second. They have plated two, and they have a 7-6 lead. Another pitch low in the dirt. Mason don't quite have the control that he generally does here today. Mason 
five and uh, two thirds innings coming in with three walks. One ball and no strikes to the cleanup hitter, Brian Burrows. Burrows playing a third for Coach Salgo. Well, Cohen looks back at Williams at second, or Morris at second. Come set, pitch. Fouled off first base side. That's out of play. Devin Morris gave the streaks the lead with that two strike, two out RBI double. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Burroughs. Outside, two balls and a strike. B.J. Morlock, the one in the Rams bullpen, says John. <laughs> Top of the six, seven, six. Streaks have regained the lead with a huge two-out hit by Devin Morris. Outside ball three. Mason's trying to overthrow, I believe, and every pitch is outside. Outside and low. Three balls and one strike to Brian Burroughs. Rams need to keep this as a one-run game. They have just three hits in the game. McCullen, long look in, gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. Come set, 3-1 pitch coming to Burroughs. Hits it just foul outside the bag at third. Count goes full. Runners will be off with the pitch. That's Devin Morris at second, and Creighton Kern at first. Mason Siegel awaits on deck for the streaks. Rams want to see him next inning in the seventh. <laughs> Mason McQuillan comes set. Payoff pitch coming to Burroughs. There go the runner. That's low ball four. That's going to load him up. Morris goes down to third, Kern goes down to second, and Brian Burrows on it first with the walk. Going to bring up Mason Siegel. Now batting number 42, Mason Siegel. Doubled in the first inning, walked in the third, and grounded into a very unconventional 3-4-1 put out in the fifth. Wimpkin had the ball tip off his glove. Plasman fielded it, threw from his knees to Cooper Farrell. Covering first. Nice play by the Rams. Back in the fifth. Base is full of streaks. First pitch gets behind Wolfram. Here comes Morris. He scores standing on the wild pitch. Three runs here in the sixth have given Archibald a 8-6 lead. Kern moves up to third. Burroughs goes down to second. Siegel with a one ball, no strike count. Rams had a 6-5 lead coming into the six. Now trail 8-6. Farrell started the inning. McQuillan came in in relief. And has seen his first rough outing at the varsity level this season. McQuillan's 1-0 to Siegel. Outside ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Morlock still firing away in the bullpen down behind the Rams third base dugout. McQuillan's 2-0 pitch to Siegel. Runners lead from second and third. That's low. Nice stop by Wolfram. Count goes to 3-0 to Mason Siegel. And this could be the last batter that McQuillan's going to face. Carson Dominic on deck for the streaks. 3-0 pitch from Mason Siegel. Mason McQuillan scores around the bunt. That's a strike called. Three balls and a strike. McQuillan picks up the cap. Puts it back on. 3-1 count. To the number five hitter, first baseman. Actually, Siegel is now on the mound. He started at the first base, came on in relief a couple innings ago. 3 1 pitch. That's low. Wolfram blocks and saves another run. So Siegel goes down the first base on the walk. And 
Timeout as head coach Runaway comes out from the dugout. And that's probably going to be it for Mason McQuillan. And we'll take a timeout and be back after this. On the drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, the streaks with three here in the sixth are still batting. They have an eight to six lead. We'll be back. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Clubhouse Pizza in A is your small town alternative for happy food at a happy place. Featuring one of the area's best pizzas, Clubhouse Pizza in A will not disappoint. Wing Wednesdays, buffets on Thursday, happy hour on Friday. That's just a few of the things Clubhouse Pizza in A has for specials. Stop out after the game for amazing food, great drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. Hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Or order some takeout at 419-658-2720. Come by for a visit at 210 East Main Street. In Nay, or check them out on Facebook at Clubhouse Pizza Nay. Rachel and Jason Gilliam and the great staff at Clubhouse Pizza in Nay are proud supporters of the Rams. Back at Sonora, BJ Morlock comes in the pitch, not the, as we said, the outing that McCullen wanted or the Rams. Just a third of an inning. It's allowed just one run so far. All the runners on base are his responsibility. 27 pitches for Mason, just 11 strikes. Bases full of streaks. They lead 8-6. to six. Morlock with a very effective two innings last night here. Back in the game here. Back-to-back outings by BJ. Dominic comes to bat. Carson is the ninth batter to bat here in the sixth inning for Archibald. First pitch by BJ. Another nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. Dalton definitely earning his keep here today in the sixth inning. <laughs> Saved about three runs. On top of the three runs, the streaks have already scored. Morlock, long look in, gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. He comes set. Runners lead from heavy base. 1 0 pitch. Outside ball two. Dominic, RBI in the first. Grounded into a double play in the third. Flew out to Grady Gusweiler in deep center field in the fifth. Morlocks comes set as 2 0 pitch to Dominic. Swung on. Shallow fly ball, right field. Harris comes in, calls off Plasman and makes the catch for the final out here in the sixth inning. But damage has been done. Archibald sends nine to the plate. They take the lead as they score three runs in the inning. They do so on three hits. No Ram errors and the streaks leave them loaded. Bottom of the six we go here from group field at Tenora High School. Archibald Six, or Archibald six, Archibald eight, Tenora six, on your drop zone, pizzeria scoreboard. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Fired Stone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25 person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419 785 4015. Or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Back at Tenora, Rams have some work to do. They now trail 8-6 to six after the three spot in the top of the sixth inning by Archibald. 
Rams are going to send the bottom part of the order. 7, 8, 9 to face Mason Siegel. Siegel came in relief of Towns. Be a second inning of work. Towns went the first four, gave up six runs, just one earned run. First pitch is a strike to Plasman. Siegel's pitch. Plasman with a deep drive right field. Morris goes back, turns, spins, and puts it away. Devin Morris turned to head into the gap with the wind blowing to direct right field plus off the bat of Plasma and a right-handed batter. That ball's going to tail towards the line, which it did. Mora spun again and wound up putting the long drive away off the bat of Eli Plasma for the first out. Going to bring up B.J. Morlock. First pitch to B.J. is a ball. B.J. 0 for 2. Strikeout swinging and a strikeout looking. Seagulls pitch is inside. One ball and, or two balls and no strikes to B.J. Morlock. Came in to pitch. Here. Last inning to get the Rams out of the jam. Ground ball into right field. Opposite field single by Morlock. B.J. rounds the base. He's going to stay put right there. The One out single for Morlock. Will bring Grady Gusweiler to the plate. Grady 0 for 2. Yes, Grady is due. A little bit of a slump for Grady. His slump buster right here would fix that. 255 for Grady on the season. Rams trail 8-6 as they bat here in the bottom of the sixth. Throw over. Back with the head first dive is Morlock. Our next contest will be back here Friday. Sectional finals. If you're coming, you'll need a ticket. You'll have to purchase that online at the OHSAA backslash tickets website. And they'll come and scan you in. Pitch is a strike to Grady Gusweiler. Pitch to Grady is inside. <laughs> Cal Evans had a ball and a strike. Yes, all those inside pitches have been strikes so far. With the exception of that one. One ball, one strike, one out. Morlock leads from first. Rams trail by two here in the six. Grady swings and fouls it back. One ball and two strikes to the Rams center fielder, Grady Gusweiler. Siegel comes set, looks at BJ at first. One, two pitch to Grady. Old tap or shortstop side. Shortstop falls down. Diller kind of skidded on the turf. Had the intention to throw to second to get Morlock. He slid, put the glove on the ball, and the ball just trickled at his feet. So an infield single for Grady. Puts runners at the corner, runners at first and second. I don't know that he would have thrown him out of second, honestly. He's... Who was that pitcher? Pitch to Mosier is a strike on the outside corner. Aiden was hit by a pitch and scored in the first, singled in the third, walked, stole the base in the fourth. Pitch is fouled back. Rams trail eight to six. Here in the bottom of the sixth, they have runners at first and second with one out. Two balls, or no balls and two strikes to Aiden Mosier. Siegel comes set. 0-2 pitch to Mosier. Single into left field. Here comes Morlock. He rounds third. He's going to score. Throw to the plate. Not in time. That allows Mosier to go down to second. Mosier took the 0-2 pitch the other way. And just slapped it out there into left field. So Mosier with the single and an RBI. Scoring was B.J. Morlock. Going to third was Grady Gusweiler, and I don't think that's what Coach Selgo wants at this point of the season. you got to throw that ball to second base to keep that runner at first. 8-7, Rams with runners at second and third with one out. Caden Radzik steps in, first pitch to Caden as a strike. Are you ready? Come on. That's fundamental baseball. Tournament time comes around. If you're Coach Runnelletter, Coach Salgo, which the Rams did that earlier this game as well, you don't want to see that. Suicide squeeze. Razik puts the bat on the ball. 
But right back to the plate, they're going to say it's a foul ball. Coach Salgo comes out. So we have time here. They're going to go talk to the field umpire. Radzik with a drag bunt. Bunt went right back to the pitcher. He initially, I thought he called that a foul ball, and he did. So we're going to reset everything. Suicide squeeze was fouled at the plate by Radzik. So no balls and two strikes to Caden. Archibald leads 8-7. Rams have runners at second and third with one out here on the bottom of the sixth. Siegel comes set. He's going to wind it up with runners on second and third. Pitch to Caden, and he swings and misses. That's a huge out for Siegel and the streaks. Radzik, the second out, is going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Dalton clutch in these situations all season long. 425 for Dalton. Sends the first pitch over our head for a strike. Dalton scored a run in the first, stole two bases, walked and scored in the third, flew out to deep center in the fourth. Siegel winds it up, 0-1 pitch. Wolfram smashes it inside the bag at third. Third baseman knocks it down, throws it across. Not in time. The Rams have tied the game on the infield single by Wolfram. That was a heck of a play by Brian Burles to save the go-ahead run. So an RBI by Dalton scored Grady from third. Mosier down to third for the Rams. Rams will again try and steal a run here with Dalton Wolfram at first, which they actually did earlier in the game. Karen Ward steps in. Siegel's going to work out of the set position. Long set. Here comes the pitch. There goes Wolfram. Dalton's going to try and get in the run down. They're just going to let him go down to second base. So Wolfram with an uncontested stolen base is down at second. Be his third steal of the game. Pitch was a strike to Tyron Ward. Ward 0 for 2 was hit by a pitch and scored in the third. The Rams have tied it at 8. Go ahead run is at 3rd. Rams with runners at 2nd and 3rd. Pitch to Tyron Ward. Fouls it off over the first base dugout. No balls and 2 strikes to the Rams 3rd baseman Tyron Ward. Rams have tied it here in the bottom of the 6th. After falling behind 8-6. to 0-2 oh, pitch to Terran. Swings. High fly ball to shallow right. In comes Morris. To make a running catch to retire Ward and the Rams. Nice. I took it instantly. Or initially took a step back, Devin did. Then just jetted in full speed to grab it waist high to retire the Rams. But the Rams send seven to the plate. They tie it. They score two runs in the inning. Yeah, I told them. They do so with four hits. No errors, and they leave 2 1 base. We're headed to the top of the seventh inning here at Group Field at Tenora High School. We have a new game on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. We are tied at. Eight. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Balmy Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Back at Group Field, I guess if you want to go into the tournaments, this is how you want to do it. We are tied at eight as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Morlock will work the seventh inning for the Rams after getting the Rams out of the jam last inning. For the Blue Streaks, Bottom part of the order, 7, 8, 9, but that's the part of the order that started all the ruckus last inning. Seiler, Nafziger, and Bond to face B.J. Morlock. Morlock just pitched a third of an inning last time, their last inning. McQuillan 
came in relief of Mason. Bad outing for Mason. That's a third of an inning. Only allowed one run. Cooper Farrell was tagged for three runs in uh, three and a third innings. Four hits, three runs for Cooper. Struck out one and walked one. So Morlock is the fourth pitcher to work for the Rams here <laughs> on this Tuesday night. Long homestand for the Rams, as we said. The Rams, 13-1 and at home this season. Only loss was that Saturday, late Saturday game to Napoleon. But otherwise, Rams are 13-1 and here at Group Field this season. Last loss was April 29th at Kaleida to a very good Wildcat baseball team. Warlock works from the set position. Pitch to Siler is a strike. Jaden does not think so. Siler flew out in the first, drilled a solo home run in the third, and singled in the sixth. Warlock long looks in. Siler asks for time. He steps out. Thanks, sir. Well, hi. Warlock comes, sets Silers back in the box. Oh, one pitch, just a bit outside. One ball and one strike. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in here on this. I kind of forget what data sometimes we've been at the ballpark so much in the last week and a half. It feels like a Thursday, but it's Tuesday. 1-1 one, one pitch to Siler outside, just misses. Two balls and a strike. Tomorrow we'll be at Blue Devil Field in Springfield. Lady Rams and the take on the number one seed. 2-1 pitch from Morlock to Siler. That's high, ball three. Three balls and one strike to Jaden Siler. The streak second baseman. The Rams take on Oak Harbor tomorrow at 4 o'clock is your first pitch. Junior right-hander, Morlock comes set. 3-1 pitch to Siler. Inside, ball four. Siler works a leadoff walk. That's a great strike, DJ. So the streak sent nine to the plate in the sixth. They're going to send the same exact Batting order up here in the seventh, and it starts the same way. Siler on at first base to start the inning. Actually, have a pinch hitter for Archibald. Zach Short actually came in to play first base two innings ago when Mason Siegel went from first to the mound in relief of Mason Towns. So Shorts, the batter, throw over Siler back with a head first dive into first base. Calls, and I realize, no, I don't have any control over that. Why would I spend energy? Siler with just one stolen base this season. Warlock comes set. Pitch, Short squares her on the bunt. Bunts do it. They have Siler picked off. He's going to make it in the second, however. Wolfram threw down to first. Bosselman fired down to second. And with the speed of Siler, he slides in safely. So a stolen base for Siler. As he's in at second. Safely on the missed bunt by Mason C or, uh, Zach Short. No balls and one strike to short. Bats from the left side. Warlock throws back to second, and the ball goes into center field. Siler is going to head over to third. So Archibald has to go ahead and run at third base with nobody out. Rams tried to sneak in behind Siler at second. Warlock's throw was high and went into center field. Go to work here, kid. How are you? No balls and one strike. As the count to Zach Short. Warlock comes set. Pitch too short. Just misses. One ball and one strike. Okay. Dalton Wolfram thought it was a strike for sure. Actually, it's two balls and a strike. Okay. Two balls and a strike to Zach Short. 
Siler, the go-ahead run. We are tied at eight here in the top of the seventh. Yeah, yeah. Morlock comes set, and before he does so, time. BR comes out. We thought, actually, John had the count. I had the count one and one, so BR comes out, and they reset it to one and one. It's like, did we miss something? Because <laughs> he squared around the bunt on one, bunted through it. Next one was a ball, then Morlock wheeled and fired it into center field, which would have been the third pitch. So one ball, one strike to Zach Short. Morlock's set and pitch. Pitches inside, ball two. Two balls and a strike to Short. Siler dancing away at third. Siler walked, was picked off first. Throwdown was not in time. Then the next pitch... Morlock stepped off and an attempted pickoff threw the ball in the center field, allowing Siler to jet down to third. Morlock's 2 1 to short is inside ball three. Three balls and a strike. I would say you're probably right. Jet Bond on deck for the Archibald Blue Streaks. The catcher's done a fabulous job here tonight, both offensively and defensively. Morlock's 3-1 to Short is inside. Ball four, so Short with a walk. Goes down to first. That'll put streak runners at first and third with nobody out in this tie game. Bond. All he's done is single in the second and had a RBI double in the sixth and also scored a run. Well, Morlock comes set. Pitch coming to Bond. Breaking ball, strike called. Nice pitch by Morlock. <laughs> Streaks runners lead from first and third. Nobody out. Pitch coming to Bond. Outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. I don't want to see everything in yours. Your best stuff. What can you throw for a strike? Will be called without one ball, one strike pitch coming from Morlock to Bond. Squared around the bunt, brought the bat back, and it was a strike. So Morlock ahead, one ball and two strikes to the catcher, number nine hitter, Jet Bond. Steven Diller in the top of the lineup for the streaks is on deck. Tied at eight here in the seventh, and very suspect right now for the Rams. Breaking ball high and inside. Two balls and two strikes. Bond digs back into two pitch from Morlock. Swung on and missed. Down goes Bond for the first out. That's a big out. Double play gets you out of the inning. The Rams have turned several this week. Up to the plate, number six. Top of the lineup, Stephen Diller. 280 coming in. Diller struck out, swinging his last plate appearance. Flew out to center in the fourth. Sacrificed in the second. Started the game with a double in the gap. And came around to score on Devin Morris's double. Morlock's pitch behind the back of Diller. Ball one. DJ, I can't sit down there. It's too low for me. Smells like rain. Somebody say it smells like rain. I hope it rains. Tied at eight. One out. Runners at the corners for Archibald here in the top of the seventh. Morlock comes set. 1-0 pitch. Swung on. Infield fly rule. Plasman calls it. He puts it away for out number two. That's a huge out. Pop up to Plasman. Regardless, he was out anyways. F4 for out number two. No batting number 44. I guess there wasn't an infield fly because there wasn't the bases were not full. So that's my, my apologies. Down the line without defense. 
So right. Kevin Morris steps in. And Morris has been hotter than a firecracker here tonight at Tenora High School. First pitch to Morlock is a bit inside to Morris. Morris doubled in the first. Walked and stole the base in the second. Singled in the fourth. And a go-ahead double in the sixth. Broke the tie then at six. Now we are tied to eight. Morlock's 1-0 pitch to Morris. Breaking ball a bit high. Two balls and no strikes. Morris, 298 coming in. Six home runs on the season for Morris. Batch from the left side. 2-0 pitch from Morlock. That's high and away. Ball three. Again, Creighton Kern on deck. Creighton, 5-0-8 on the season. Three zero pitch from Morlock coming to Morris. Strike one called on the outside corner. Streaks had runners at the corners with nobody out. Still have the same runners at the corners now with two outs. Morlock's three one coming to the lefty Morris. Swung on, drilled deep, deep, right field, and that is gone. Three-run homer for Devin Morris. Puts Archibald up. 11-8. No doubt about that. We said Morris with six home runs on the season. Now has seven. Three RBIs. That wasn't real. 11-8. Archibald now leads by three here with two outs in the seventh. To the plate, number four, Creighton Kern. Creighton Kern steps in for Archibald. Creighton single, stole the base, scored and had an RBI in the first, struck out in the second, grounded too short in the fourth, walked in the sixth. Warlock comes set. First pitch to Kern, bouncer, right side, Bosselman up with it, has nobody to cover. Morlock late getting off the mound, infield single for Creighton Kern. Get him a ticket if he's going to watch the game. Brian Burrows. number 24, Brian Burrows. Going to step in. Got to do just what you want to do. Burrows scored in the first. Stand there and watch. Grounded the short in the second. Popped out in foul territory to the catcher in the fifth. And walked in the sixth. Ball the first base. Runner from first leads away, Creighton Kern. Morlock throws over. Pitch is a little bit high. Bosselman snares it. Kern, 14 steals on the season. Definitely a threat to go here. 11-8. There he goes. Pitch is high. Throw down to second base. Not in time. Throw gets away from Plasman. Kern gets up. He's going to head down to third. So Kern gets a steal, and a throw goes into center field. Allows him to go to third. One ball and no strikes to Brian Burrows. Burroughs actually saved an additional run last inning. A diving stop down the third base. One run scored on the play and just saved another. Horlock's pitch is outside and low. Two balls and no strikes. Streaks have scored six runs in the last two innings to grab an 11 to 8 lead. <laughs> go, Horlock go, go. comes set. 2 0 pitch coming. Pitch is high. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes. To the cleanup hitter, Brian Burroughs. Mason Siegel is on deck for Coach Salgo's Archibald Blue Streaks. Coming in at 15 and 8 this season. Coach Champs in the NWOAL with Patrick Henry, 6 and 1 in the league this season. Burroughs asks for time, steps out. Another beautiful day for baseball here. That pitch is high and away. Ball four. So Burroughs trots down the first on the walk. Second straight inning. Archibald 
close to batting around. They batted around last inning and scored three. This will be the eighth man to bat here in the inning. Mason Siegel steps in. Singled in the first, walked in the third, grounded into a double play in the fifth, and walked again in the sixth. Pitch is inside, gets behind Wolfram. That allows the run to score from third. So Kern comes in for Archibald. That's their fourth run here in the seventh. They now lead 12 to eight. Down to second goes Burles on the wild pitch. Game going to the top of the seven. Eight to eight. Siegel has a one ball, no strike count on him. Morlock comes set. 1 0 pitch. Fouled off first base side. One ball, one strike, two outs. Archibald has grabbed a 12 to 8 lead, courtesy of the three run bomb off the bat of Morris. One one count to Siegel. Outside ball two. No activity in the Rams bullpen. He said Coach Renolette with the Rams playing on Friday. Not going to use all of his arms here tonight on Tuesday. Morlocks two one pitch. That's low. Gets behind Wolfram. Down to third. As Dalton Wolfram must have caught that one on the inside of the knee, comes a little bit hobbled. So Burroughs is down to third on another wild pitch. Siegel has a 3 1 count at the plate. Home plate umpire is going to dust off the pebbles, giving Dalton a couple extra seconds, making sure he's all right. One thing about the home plate umpires we've seen here within the last week, they're very friendly and actually almost act sometimes as semi coaches here to the boys. 3 1 pitch is a strike called. <laughs> Siegel doesn't think so. He took about three steps towards first base. Has to take the shame walk back to the batter's box. Count is full. Three and two. Two outs. Runner at third is Burroughs. Morlock's pitch. Outside corner. Strike three called. Down goes Siegel. Down go the streaks, but they send eight batters to the plate. And they score four big runs to break the tie. It's 12 to 8. And in the inning, said four runs for Archibald. Big hit in the inning was the bomb. Three run home run by Morris. Two out, three run homer. Two hits in the inning. No errors and one left on base. Bottom of the seventh we go. Archibald 12 and Tenora 8. We'll be back right after this time out. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Bottom of the seventh inning, last chance for the Rams. They now trail 12 to 8 after they fought back to tie it at six or, or eight. Streaks with four runs, all with two outs in the top of the seventh inning to lead 12 to 8. 12 runs, 11 hits, and an error for Archibald for Tenora. Eight runs, seven hits, and no errors for Tenora. For the Rams, 5, 6, and 7, Harris, Bosselman, and Plasman to face. 
right-hander, Mason Siegel. Siegel came in in relief of Mason Towns. So Harris steps in, batting 290 on the season. Luke has a walk, a hit by a pitch, and a run scored, and a ground out. First pitch is a ball. I have another one when she went somewhere else. This pitch is hammered foul down the right or the left side. One ball and one strike. Town started, went the first four, allowed six runs on two hits, just one earned run, walked four, struck out five. High fly ball into center field. Creighton Kern cruises over into left center field and puts it away for out number one, retiring Luke Harris. Mason Siegel, his third inning of work, has yet to allow a hit. No, I guess he, wait a minute. Yeah, he did. They got, or, they got Johnny Rodriguez pitching for Archibald on their game changer. And I don't think that, or not Johnny, Jordan Rodriguez pitching. First pitch to Hunter is a strike. Hunter with an R two RBIs on a single in the third. And grounded out too short his other two at bats. Strike two. Bosselman quickly down, no balls and two strikes. Siegel's pitch is outside. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. One out. We'll be back here Friday with baseball. We'll be in Holland tomorrow for girls softball. One two pitch to Hunter is low. Two balls and two strikes. One out. Base is empty. Rams trail 12 to 8. About to see their winning streak come to an end. The last loss for Snorro was back on April 29th at Kaleida. Bosselman sends a tapper just outside the bag at third. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Rams have won eight straight and 11 of their last 12 coming into the contest. These two teams, again, have like played just numerous close games over the years. Archibald was number one in the state probably about four or five years ago came here. Rams in a similar situation as Bosselman goes down on strikes. It was a second out. Come back to rally for, I believe, an 11-10 win. They actually scored on a wild pitch to defeat then the number one team in Division Three, the Archibald Blue Streaks. Last year, the Rams with that one nothing win in the district semifinals. <laughs> Going to bring up Eli Plasman. Plasman struck out in the second, had two RBI single in the third, and flew out in the right, or two right. This one he sends to straightaway center field. Kern calls it as he drifts into right center field and puts it away for out number three. F8 on the put out and that retires the Rams in the seventh inning. Fort Sonora, no runs, no hits, no errors for the Blue Streaks, and nobody left on. Final from Tenora, Archibald 12 and Tenora 8. We'll be back with the Bitlack Insurance and Financial Services post game show, and we will do it right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back at Sonora High School, Rams fall to the Blue Streaks 12-8 as Archibald scored four runs in the seventh inning with two outs to break a tie game at eight. Archibald improves to 16-8. and eight. The Rams fall to 19-5. and five. Time of the game was two hours and 34 minutes. Losing pitcher will be for Tenora. 
Cooper Farrell will take the loss, and for Archibald, picking up the win, it be Mason Siegel in relief. Archibald grabbed a 1-0 lead, or actually, Archibald grabbed a 4-0 lead with four in the top of the first inning. Rams fought right back and scored two. Archibald increased their lead to 5-1 after three. Rams came back in the bottom of the third to grab a 6-5 lead in the third inning and it stayed that way till the sixth. Archibald scored three in the sixth to grab a 8-6 lead. Snor came right back and tied it at eight with two in the bottom of the sixth. And four runs in the top of the seventh inning for Archibald, capped by Morris's three-run homer with two outs over the right field fence. Gave Archibald at the time an 11 to eight lead. They added another run a bit later on a bunch of wild pitches to grab a 12-8 win here. 12 runs, 12 hits, three errors for Archibald for Tenora. Eight runs, five hits, and two errors. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Appreciate you from Archibald or Tenora, and best of luck to Archibald. We said these two teams could actually meet again next weekend, I believe, in the district finals at Defiance High School. So both teams will play Friday. Tenora will be here, and the Rams will play the winner of the game tomorrow between Ottawa Hills and Delta, whereas Archibald will be home Friday and they will play the winner of Paulding and Swan. So in all reality, you can have a rematch with these two teams, and that would take place on the 27th of May. Thanks again for everybody watching and listening. Sorry about the audio trouble we had a little bit earlier. Not absolutely sure uh, what happened, but for the first time this year, we seem to have lost our audio. But... Appreciate you, and we'll see everybody tomorrow from Springfield High School. Well, they're hosting. It's not actually at Springfield High School. It's at their softball complex a little bit away from Springfield High School. So thanks to all of our sponsors, which I lost my sponsor sheet somehow. Um, but we appreciate each and every sponsor that we have. So we'll see everybody tomorrow at 3.40 for the Signs Excavating pregame. But our sponsors, BSN Sports, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Northwest Ohio Sports, Wiener Hill and Weber Attorneys at Law, Tomorrow Rams Athletic Boosters, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon, Weber Bookkeeping, Bidlack Insurance and Investments, Oklahoma Tavern, Ben Stevens Body Shop, Signs Excavating, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance and Fitness, Postuma Insurance and Investments, Clubhouse Pizza and A, Firestone Tavern, uh, my Maumee Valley Title Agency and Mayfield Engineering Corporation. Thank all of our fantastic sponsors. So we'll see everybody tomorrow from Holland. Until then, have a good night, everybody. The Law Office of... Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.